Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use our Arazzo beading technique to create some beautiful snowflake beaded coasters. If you haven't heard of Arazzo before, it's something that we've developed ourselves using sort of a mixture of lots of different crafting techniques and styles to create these really beautiful finished designs that you can then sew with. That's the great thing about these Arazzo designs. Unlike just sort of solid stagnant beadwork, you can then use it like it's a piece of fabric, you can sew with it, you can stitch, whatever you can do with a piece of fabric, you can do with one of these. So today I'm going to be showing you how the technique works and then we're going to continue from there and I'll discuss with you about how you can turn it into a really gorgeous coaster. If you haven't joined us before, uh, make sure you click the little link there in the description about joining our newsletter so that you know when we're doing all of our live tutorials because at the moment we're doing three per week uh, just because that way you won't miss out when we're doing anything. Uh, we've got lots of people who've joined us already which is always good fun. Um, over on YouTube we've got Jan, Marie, Roses here as well, we've got Elaine, Evelyn here, Veronica's on Facebook as well, we've got Chris and Francis, um, Stacy is here from Ohio as well. Um, thank you all for joining already today. Um, apparently Eileen says it's freezing in Florida. Do you know what? As much as I'd like to believe that, I don't really think it's as cold as it is here. I was at home thinking, do you know what? Should I be wearing my gilet inside? I don't know, but I didn't. Uh, my little vest. Um, but yeah, we've got lots of fun on the agenda today. Um, in case you missed it, last week on Saturday, I did our gorgeous um, Labyrinth necklace kit, which is this one here. Just go check out the video uh, if you fancy having a go at learning how to make this gorgeous necklace. I sort of went through three different designs of doing herringbone stitch, which was um, sort of your even count herringbone, your uh, flat herringbone, sorry, even count, odd count, and then how to make herringbone straps as well. So that was last week's. Um, but yeah, so lots and lots going on today. I can see lots of people uh, commenting in as well. And then I'll just pop this one up on the screen because I thought this was quite nice. We've got one here from Evelyn who says, I've just had to share because I'm so happy I just finished my first try at metal clay and it worked. Great job there to Evelyn. Um, and thank you for joining us, Evelyn. Uh, I'm really glad that worked out. That's one that uh, mum has done before as well, metal clay. Uh, she's a big fan of using that. We used to have these little um, uh, little Japanese maple uh, leaves in our front yard from our massive Japanese maple tree. And she turned one of those into a, a really gorgeous pendant, but great job. Um, as always, if you want to send your pictures in, maybe I'll just pop it on the screen. No, that's not going to work. Uh, I'll do it in a minute. Um, but yes, if you want to send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk, I'll just pop it up on the screen very, very quickly. You can be featured on the show as usual on a Saturday segment. I'm going to show you how uh, I'm going to show off all the pictures that you've been sending in. Uh, at the end of the show and sort of we can admire everybody's handiwork. So if you haven't done so yet and you want to be on the show this weekend, send us your picture to live at beadspider.co.uk. Uh, so yes, let me just show you our little um, coaster, one of the coasters. So this is how I've uh, made my little coaster. There it is. Uh, a cute little design which I thought was perfect, which uh, is great for popping your little mug onto. This particular one, I've done my Arazzo beading design here. The kit, uh, it does include four different patterns. So if you're purchasing our little kit, it is on sale at the minute. He's, here are the four different designs that you will learn. Um, I've clearly made design number two. So you can see it's pretty much one to one on about the sort of size it would be. Um, and then I've just used felt to give it a really, really lovely finish. So you can see there's the front and there's your little felted back. Um, I've used some buckram inside, but we'll get into that later. Um, so it's going to be lots and lots of fun today, I think. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the Arazzo technique. 
Um, I'm also going to show you how to do, um, <clears throat> yeah, all of the technique, and then I'll sort of discuss with you the, the sewing and knitting process. Um, let's see. So let's just pop down to my hands here. I'll just, ooh, I'm a bit zoomed out, a bit too far zoomed out, and I'll show you the sorts of things I'm going to be using with today's tutorial. So, uh, as I said, I'm going to be making this gorgeous little coaster, at least showing you the technique for it. Let's pop my face up in the corner. Uh, here we go. Ta-da! Here I am. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you how to make this little fella just here, this sort of thing. Um, we've got four colors of beads, which if you're getting the kit, it does include all of this. So you get the beads here, all four colors. So you've got a really nice sort of color there for the background. We've got a vibrant uh, silver line gold, which we use for our borders. Um, we've got the white sort of snowflakey color there and a really lovely periwinkle AB for... Um, also that sort of frosty, wintry color. Uh, as I said, we've got four patterns included with the kit. So all four of these are available, uh, in come included as part of the kit. Plus you will also get your word chart, which the word chart shows you the entire process. So snowflake design, you know, it tells you here 39 of color A in row one, so on, so forth, all the way down. It covers the entire process for each of the four designs. So today I'm going to show you design number three. So this is the uh, little word chart I'm going to need. I'm going to be making, showing you this design here at the bottom. Uh, Jermaine's already started a little bit for me. And as always, I will be using Arazzo backing fabric. But let's talk a little bit about Arazzo first. So <clears throat> the way that you do it, uh, I've had a question where a minute, where is it? Here we go. Elaine says, are the beads heat resistant? So these are glass seed beads. So uh, they're just as resistant as you would expect glass little seed beads to be. So they're perfectly fine for that. You won't have any issues with that. Um, I wouldn't suspect that they'll be overly fragile unless you're smashing your mug down onto it. Um, the beads, because they've got the, the sort of, there's like a backing fabric structure, it helps to provide extra strength so that when you're putting your empty mug onto the top of it, or a full mug, you can see it'll just sort of pop on there. And then of course the felt will be fine with, um, you know, your hot things and like this. Uh, so the technique that we're going to be using, it's sort of a little bit away from your normal beading techniques. You can, if you want to do these in a square stitch, but I recommend the Arazzo Teak technique a little bit more just because of the sorts of things that you can do with it. It's sort of shape wise and design wise. It's really, really a useful technique for sort of making these beaded shapes and getting diagonals and straight lines and everything. Um, I'll show you here as well. So let's talk about Arazzo itself. So essentially what we're doing, we're using a backing fabric material, which is like a, a grid sort of canvasy mesh, if you can see that. Maybe I'll hold it up to this camera. Let's see which one will show it better. No, this one's gonna definitely show it better. Uh, so if we have a look, actually, let's put it down on the table and zoom in. Maybe that'll work better. You can see it's a really, really uh, high quality canvas grid that we're using. So as we, if you have a quick little look, you can see there's big squares up and down, and then you've sort of got like a, a, a mini structure of small little rectangles and squares in between. So essentially, because we have this grid structure, it makes it really easy for keeping your beads exactly in place where you need them to be. So it uh, is sort of using techniques from lots of different crafts. It's sort of a mixture between tapestry and cross stitch and these sorts of things. Um, but then of course we're using beads. It's 100% made of beads. Instead of like on a cross stitch, how you go, you start here and then you do over there and you do over here because you're working with a thread, you need to sort of do all of the colors individually. With this one, it's much, much easier like a tapestry where you start in the top and you go across and back and forth and back and forth. And as you continue along, it sort of prints out your design. 
The nice thing as well, because we're using this backing fabric, it starts off really firm when you're when you're sort of needing to work with it. It's quite stiff, quite firm, but then as you attach your beads to it, it can it becomes much much softer, like a piece of fabric. So I'll show you one here I've got which is, this is one of our Arazzo butterfly designs, because we've done a lot of different designs over the, well, not that many, but, you know, more and more that we want to do, um, that we want to sort of increase and add more to. But this is one of our uh, older designs. I'll show you this one as well, actually. I really like this one. This one's our tiger face. We've got the butterflies, but we also have the tiger face. Here's the tiger face. But you can see what starts off as a relatively firm, piece of fabric it becomes like quite stiff it becomes really really soft and supple by the weight of the beads so it works beautifully well and then when you finished with it you can knit uh, sorry maybe not knit but anything that you could do with a piece of fabric you can do with one of these so you can sew it you can stitch with it by hand if you wanted to make it a wall hanging you can um, as Jermaine suggested, with our little coasters, you could even hang them with ribbon from one to the other and make like a, a long wall hanging sort of thing. Uh, but then, uh, for example, like our little Arazzo angel just here, which this little angel is on sale. This one makes a little wall hanging with some nice tassels. Maybe I'll show it to you um, hung as that's how it's meant to be. Uh, our little angel just here. This is another one of the designs which uh, it's on sale at the minute. Um, if you want to get that design, um, this so you can make it into a wall hanging if you wanted to. You could also, which I thought was really, really lovely, which we keep all of our Arazzo designs in. We have a beaded box as well that you could make it into. This is full of Jermaine's finished jewelry. See, look, beaded, uh, a beaded sort of fabric box, uh, beaded, sorry, sewn box. So it's got fabric all the way around the outside. And then we've got the um, the beads in the center here as, as a little design there. That one's our tulips. And then this one is another of Jermaine's sort of, Jermaine is a much better sewer than I. I have done a big fat zero when it comes to sewing. And so you can tell Jermaine's made all of these. She also made a really cute little bag out of one of our little peacock designs. But you can literally do whatever it is that you want with a razzo if you um, if you can sew with it. So you could quilt, you can do fabric, all sorts of different things. And then essentially you attach them bead by bead by bead, one by one, with what is a half cross stitch. So um, it's very, very simple. I am gonna show you the entire process of how you do it in a little bit of time. Um, where is my hands? Here we go. So yes, uh, let's let's sort of get on with the the actual learning, shall we? So like I said, it's a half cross stitch. Uh, Jan Alston says you could make a phone case. Great idea there, there from Jan. Um, that would be a very fun idea. But yes, so we have our canvas backing fabric here. Essentially, you need a piece that is going to cover the, you just sort of cut it to the size that you need, whatever size that you need for your finished piece in total. Let's just zoom out a teeny weeny bit more if we can, so that I can really show you what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so we need a piece that is going to cover the entirety of our design. So the pieces are about three inches by three inches, the finished design. So as long as your piece is, say, maybe, four or five inches across because then you've got space for working around it as well when it comes to the end stitching it or sewing it or whatever it is that you want to do um you uh you will have that as an ability so you can see just here the edges of the canvas wait maybe you can maybe you can't if it'll come in focus so see how the edges of the canvas oh, i don't know if it's going to want to focus doesn't matter but anyway the edges of the canvas are a little bit rough where you cut them. So what the first thing that you want to do is take some sticky tape, like I have here, or some masking tape, and you cover all four edges of your backing fabric just there. So once you've got all four pieces covered, essentially it means that, um, uh, wait a minute, yes. Uh, yeah, so once we've got all four pieces, there's so many comments coming on. Everybody's excited about the Arazzo today that I can't even keep track of how many. Uh, so, 
yeah, we need to cover the edges because then that way our thread isn't going to catch. Um, Jermaine said, show off the bag. I've already shown it, but I'll show it again. So here's Jermaine's bag. Wait a minute. I'll just show it once more. There is the, the beautiful fabric uh, bag that Jermaine has made. So here it is from the outside. You can see she's also done the inside, which um, it's specific to this specific uh, design that we've done because it's double sided. Uh, there we go. And here are the handles as well. Jermaine sewed the whole thing. I can see there's comments from people wanting to, to see this again. So there we go. Uh, but yeah, um, a beautiful little design and something that you can make with your Arazzo finished pieces. Um, great. So now that we've got a little piece with our edges all done and dusted, uh, the kit, by the way, Beth has just asked, does the kit include the grid material? I'll tell you everything that you get in with the kit. So the kit, it does include the backing fabric. You've got plenty of our... Uh, thread just here, the high tenacity beading thread, which is perfect for this. It's a little bit thicker than Spidalon, but not by too much. So that's really, really good for working with. Uh, you're also going to get a beading needle included. Oh, can we see the needle? Is it going to show it? Oh, well, there it is. It's on the back of my hand here. There you go. Now we can see it. You get a needle, you get the thread, you get the backing fabric. You get your four different colors of beads in the correct quantities. Uh, that you're going to need, plus a little bit. Um, you also get your paperwork. So you get all four patterns. You get the word charts as well for each one. So word chart one, two, three, and four. The whole thing, everything is included um, except for some thread conditioner. But that one, it's not entirely necessary. It's just sort of an added bonus. Um, so yeah, first thing that we're going to do with our little Arazzo piece here is take a piece of our thread, whatever is comfortable for you to work with. Uh, it doesn't matter too much because you can always um, weave in more thread if you need it. So we work in double thread. So I'm going to do myself, I tend to like to do pretty much an arm's wingspan as far as I can stretch, maybe a little bit less, I do that twice. So two wingspans is what I tend to do because that's sort of an amount I can work with uh, and if I need to tighten the thread, I can do it all in one pull. But if you prefer using less, use less. If you wanna use more and change the thread less often, use more. It's entirely up to you. So we've got our, uh, our canvas grid fabric. It's very, very specific, the size of the fabric to the size of the beads. Because if you don't have the right size fabric, the beads, this was sort of something that we had to develop over time. Like I said, we've sort of developed this ourselves. If you don't have a piece of fabric that works with the beads in the correct way, you either get too much of a gap from bead to bead, or they're a bit bunched and the whole thread sort of, the, the, the fabric sort of bunches together. So it's very important that you have this specific fabric with these size beads. So we're using Preciosa size tens because I find that they're a really, really good size. And then of course the backing fabric again, it is a canvas here that we have on our website. You can get it from the link in the description. Um, also, Doris has just asked, how did you decide on the name Arazzo? Well, it is, uh, because it's kind of similar to like a tapestry, um, we've gone for that because that's Italian for tapestry. And Arazzo is uh, Italian for tapestry. So anyway, now that I've got my, my little thread here, I'll find the end. I'll do myself, uh, you know, two wingspans is plenty. I'll do a little bit less than that, just so it's a bit easier for demonstrating with at the minute. And then let's begin. So the first thing that we're going to do is thread on our needle onto the end of our little fabric, uh, our thread here. Just make sure it's, here we go. It's a really nice polyester that we have here. It's not bonded, so this is why we might want to wax it uh, with our thread conditioner, but let me just get my needle through there and find the, the middle point more or less because we want to use our thread doubled. This gives us extra strength when we're working. So I'll find the two ends of my thread, bring them together and then 
whoops, pull my needle so that it is exactly in the center of my thread. So just check it, there we go. And perfectly in the middle of my thread now is my, uh, my little needle here. So if we have a look, I'm going to show you in diagram form how to attach. So I'll zoom in and then I'm gonna show you with the diagrams. So you can see we've got our grid here. The patterns always start in the top corner and we go back and forth and back and forth, down and down, lower and lower, just sort of like the shuttlecock of your uh, sort of like um, lubing type machines and things. That's sort of how we're going to work. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, Vicky said, why did you use the double thread? I'll just mention that one more time. Uh, it's because it gives you extra strength uh, when you're weaving, but also um, it sort of allows it to hold everything in place a bit better. I find that you don't have to go through the beads any more than just the one time as well. It helps you with keeping a really nice firm tension. Um, lots and lots of reasons that, 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 that there are, but once you've had a go with it, if you want to have a go, try it with single thread. You'll find it's not nearly as easy to, to do. It, it works much, much nicer when you're using the double thread. So having a look at our first little diagram here, if we have a look, you can see there's the small grids, wait, let's zoom in even more just to really, really see what we're doing. So see how you've got the, the, the big boxes. So there's a big box, a big box, a big box, and a big box. And then in between those, you've got the small grids like this, and then a tiny little box in the center. Um, so I've, uh, Tina's just asked, do you leave the plastic on it? I've added the plastic. So this is actually sticky tape. You can use masking tape, which is even better. The sticky tape was all I had at hand, but I've done this so that, see how the edges aren't quite smooth? This covers the edges so that your thread doesn't catch on it. See that? Your thread will otherwise maybe catch on it. And so we don't want the thread to catch on there. That's why I've got the sticky tape on the edge. So yeah, looking at our little grid system just here, um, essentially, the small box is where we want to start. So let's just have a little look. I'm going to come from the underside of a small box in the top right corner and then continue along. So here's our little sticky tape. I'm going to start just, where's the edge of our sticky tape there? Just a little bit in. We want to have about an inch from the edge and an inch from the top. And that's sort of where we'll start, maybe a little bit less. Um, and then what I need to do is more or less come from the underside of the backing fabric and come up through it. So let's just zoom out a tiny touch and I'll show you uh, what exactly I mean. So as long as we're sort of coming out of any of the small holes close to the top corner, we're fine. So I'll just go through, use my little needle here. Just realized I don't have a very good needle. doesn't matter. So through, oh, gosh, good grief. Uh, through that little piece, uh, the little corner just here, just into that, and then I'll show you it again. So once we're inside, oh, I need to change my needle. I just realized I've got a broken needle already. Started with a broken needle. Let me just take that needle off and swap it. It's an old one that I forgot I still had here. Here we go. So luckily, I have another one right to hand. Let me just bring that back to the middle. Uh, Jermaine's just commented in, which is absolutely true. She says, it's really relaxing to do while you're um, watching television, which I agree with completely. It's, uh, I, Maxine and I, we were watching How to Make a Murderer while uh, I made my, my little sample piece. Um, here we go. Just get my needle back inside there. In you go. Come on now. Oops, needle's not wanting to play. I'm having all the needle struggles today. Let's just zoom out while I do this. Oh, that's why I've got a bloody tiny needle. No wonder I'm having troubles. Here we go. This is much better. Just through that little bead, little needle just there. I tell you, I'm not having any luck with my needles today. Um, here we go. 
So uh, Kaylee says, I cannot cross stitch. I suck at it. Well, the good thing is this isn't quite cross stitch. This is much, much easier. Um, it's You can't really go wrong with this one. You can't have too many mistakes. Um, here we go. Just get that little needle in the eye there. There we go. Now I'm cooking with gas. I like that saying. There we go. Um, I don't know why, but my Nana always used to say it. Now we're cooking with gas. Great. So, oh, wait, pop that away. So I've got my needle back in the fabric. And now that I'm not using a crappy needle, let's just come from the back and through. So through a tiny, tiny little box hole there. So where is it? There we go. And if you have a look, I'll zoom back in. See my needles coming out of this teeny weeny little hole just here, the tiny hole. We need to pull that through and we're going to leave ourselves a little bit of a tail of thread on the underside. A bit too zoomed in, I think. So we're going to leave ourselves a tail of thread, not too long, on the underside. And we're going to hold the tail underneath and the thread out the top. And now if I just show you very quickly our diagram, what I'm going to do is the blue squares, every time I'll just explain very, very quickly, the blue squares are where we go underneath, so from the top to the bottom of the fabric, and then the red is where we come from um, the bottom of the fabric back up to the top of um, our backing fabric. So I'll just pop that there. That's really tiny. That's not going to cut it, is it? Let's just pop that a little bigger and then I'll just make this a bit bigger too. Here we go. Um, whoops, whoops, sorry. Keep getting all messed up now. Oh well, that'll do, that'll do. Okay, so we're going to go from the top. Oh, actually, first things first, we want to condition our thread. I almost forgot. So what I'm going to use is a piece of thread conditioner. I've cut one in half because it doesn't matter if it gets a bit mashed. We're literally just using it to condition our thread. So the way that we do this, I'll do my initial stitch actually just to get it secured using the little diagram in the corner there. And how I'm going to do that, once I've got my little needle, is following the diagram, I'm coming from the top, from the little hole here, and I'm going to do what's essentially called a back stitch. So I'm going to go through this little tiny hole, the big diagonal hole just beside it, underneath the backing fabric, under the square I started from, and then up again through that little um, square at the top where the red is. So I'll pull that nice and tight, get it tight, keep it firmly underneath. I'll even do it a second time just to really get that thread secured in place. And now I can wax it um, with my conditioner. So it's a it's a canvas here that we've got, by the way, uh, that I'm using. And so to condition my thread, all I need to do is take my index finger or my thumb, whichever one is easier, holding the thread like this at the base. And I just run it along the length of my, uh, my thread here so that it's all the way from the end. I'll do that once more, do it a couple of times, and it just sort of creates this little coating of, of your conditioner on the wax. So you'll see in a second that it sort of bonds your wax to your two pieces, your double thread together. So just do it once more like that. And now, if you have a look, the thread, it almost looks like it's one single piece. It helps it to stop from raveling. So I'll just use my fingers and sort of make sure the coat, the wax, the conditioner is over the entirety of the conditioner, uh, over the thread. Um, Kay asks, do you recommend using the conditioner? I do personally, just because I find that it helps to keep the threads nice and tight together and it stops them from raveling with each other. So here we go. We've got our little piece just here in the corner. Let's zoom in even more. And you can see it's a bit sort of out of whack now. Uh, it's sort of moved things around, but that's okay. That's only our little top piece uh, because we've made that back stitch. So if we have a look now, the next step is with our little thread uh, coming out just there. So just say you can see we're coming out of this little um, red circle. If we just take a look at the next one, 
uh, see where the dot is through that red circle there? We're going to go down through the tiny hole that we started with and up through the big diagram, just uh, the big hole just above it as well. So there we go. Let's just flick back over. And you can see just here, so we're coming out of here, this little uh, flat square there. We're going to go down the tiny hole that we were already coming out of and up through the nearby big square. You can sort of, if it looks a bit messy, you can always go over an extra big square if you want to. It doesn't matter too much. As long as you're coming out of one of the big squares, it doesn't matter too much which one. Uh, we can sort of work from there as long as it's sort of nearby. So there we go, through there, and then just make sure I'm coming out. I'll just do it once more to make sure it is a big hole, because it's important. Down the tiny hole. Oh, am I out of shot? Yes, I am. Sorry about that. I just realized, because I got it so zoomed, it only takes a teeny weeny movement, and it's out of shot. So down this little hole thread here, Whoops. and then up through the big square. There we go. There's the big square there. So that will take us out of a big square now. Once we've got... Oh yeah, this is not an ADA, by the way. I find that this is much, much better uh, than an ADA because you've got this sort of structure to sort of help you work with. So I'm coming out of my big square now, and what we're going to do is pick up the first bead as per our, um, our little word chart. So if we take a look at this particular chart, zoom out real quick, we start in the top corner here, where it says start here, and you can see the whole first row is just A beads. So that's really, really easy. We don't need to even think about that. But if we need to, the word chart just here, it says row 1, 39 of color A, because we're working 39 beads across, 39 columns. And so with this little pattern just here, I'll go across and do 39. So let's show you with diagrams, shall we? I'm coming out of this big box, and now what I'm going to do, see where the little circle is, that's where I'm starting from, and then I'm going to pick up the first bead, which in, in this case it's always an A, and I'm going to go down diagonally to the next um, big hole, underneath the backing fabric, and then back up through the, the big square above. So where the red is, that's where I'm going to come up. So if we take a quick little look, You'll find this is a very, very simple little technique. We're working with our A beads just here, which are a really lovely little color just there. And what I'm going to do is pick up one of those A beads. And then as I did show you with the diagram there, we're going to go from this big square. Here's the next big square down diagonally. And then we're going to go up through and out of the square above. So down this one here and up through the square above. Ooh, see that? So I'm just going underneath that little middle bridge. So in a diagonal. So if we started from this top square here, we go next one below and up through the square just above it. So see that? Thread's going to go, as I pull it, you'll see. Just like our diagram, we're just going to pull that until eventually our thread goes diagonally from this big square into the canvas at that square and back up at the square above. Then we just repeat the process. So to add the next bead, we just pick up one, uh, we go through, pick up one bead, go down down through the canvas in the blue square and then up through the square that's labeled as red. So just do it again, it's exactly the same. We pick up one bead, the next color in our pattern, and then, so here we go. We're coming out of the big square just here. We go diagonally down to the next big square and then up through the big square just above it. And literally, all we have to do now is just repeat this process along the row. So from the next bead, we go out of this big square, diagonally down 
to the next big square and up through the next big square. So essentially this is just a half cross stitch that we're doing here. And as you do it, you can see the beads sort of sit slightly diagonally. They don't sit quite flat. This works really, really nicely in terms of design because when you're working like this, it means that your, I'll show you in a second, as I, I'll just continue along a few beads. I won't do the entire row because I'll show you how to turn around because that's a bit more interesting. So there you go. You can see again, it just sits sort of diagonally like that as we continue along. So diagonally down to the next big hole, underneath the backing fabric and up through that next one. So you can see we're only going underneath this little piece of backing fabric just here. See that? This is the only bit where we're going under. So now we can just take our thread nice and tight and repeat the process again. And literally you just continue along along the row like this. But I'll show you why we want them to be diagonal, which I really like. Because as I said, you can do these patterns in square stitch, but then it doesn't sit nearly as nicely. If you have a look, for example, at, where's my finished canvas one? Um, where are you? Here we go. Let's have a look at the butterfly, shall we? So if you have a look, because you've got your canvas, wait, the, see how the beads are diagonal here? It means that you can get really good straight lines because obviously you're following the texture of the box, both um, across you can get good straight lines going down in columns, but then also you get really nice diagonal lines. So Piyote stitch is good for diagonals, square stitch is good for straight lines, and the Arazzo is great because it lets you get both straight lines and you've got the diagonals as well. So you get all of those um, uh, lines in your design. So you can have straight lines left and right, up and down, and you also get the diagonals lines in your designs rather than just um, straight lines like in square stitch or diagonal lines in peyote. Um, here we go. Uh, what was the question? I'm just trying to catch up with all of the... what all the things say. Uh, when you say backing fabric, you don't mean literal fabric backing the grid, you mean the grid itself, yes. So I call this the, this is the question here from Marissa Renee. Uh, when I say the backing fabric, I do mean the grid work here. So this piece of canvas, this is the backing fabric, because if you have a look, from the front, you can only see beads. On the back, you only see the canvas. So see that? It's exactly the same, but You've got a backing structure, which is the canvas, and then your beads sit on top of the backing fabric. So that's uh, that's why I keep calling it the, the backing fabric. So continue along now. And again, we just go diagonally across exactly the same uh, as we would until we reach the end of our row. And then you can just do it. You can see you lay out your rows and very, very quickly, it comes together looking really, really nice sort of in your little rows just there. So let's just do a couple more and then I'll use this tiny little piece to show you how it will look. So where am I at here? I'll just, actually I can jump across and I can use this piece of backing fabric of Germain's just here to show you the, the process of turning around at the end of a row. Uh, rather than just show you on this mini piece, I'll show you on the piece that Jermaine started her design on. Where are you now? Just undo that. Just got a, a little, undo a couple of rows just here. A little couple of beads and then I'll be able to show you it. Here we go. So once you get to the very, very end of your row, trying to be very, very quick here. I'm just undoing a thread, which I'll show you how to undo a bead as well if you make a mistake, it's pretty easy. So now I'll just, oops, I lost a few beads, doesn't matter. So now if we have a little look, here is the top little section of our little piece just here. You just work back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And when you get to the end of a row, 
I'll show you how you do your little turning around. So I've picked up, I'm at the very, very end. You can see I need to just get this a bit closer. Um, Elaine says, do you have lots of different uh, kits using the, the fabric and the beads? Yes, we do. Check out the link in the description. There's some, but also on our website, just type Arazzo, A-R-A-Z-Z-O, and you'll find all the kits. Uh, so yeah, you can see now I'm at the point where I'm about to finish this row. So I'll add the last bead in exactly the same way. So you can see I'm coming out of the top of this little thread just here. So diagonally down. Oops move these beads out of the way diagonally down oops try and keep it in shot there there's a few kits i think there's about maybe 10 or so different kits that we have uh so yeah from this corner we're going to go down diagonally and up through the backing fabric like so so see that again we're just going underneath that tiny little piece that's going to lock in the last little bead and then i'll show you exactly how we will continue so you can see that now brings us in line so we finished this row here and i'll show you in diagram form how exactly it's going to to look so where's our next little uh instruction um here we go so yes let's just take this little picture here and now you can see what we're going to do, so I exited from that top little um, square, which, wait, let's just pop it in the corner for a second. So I'm coming out of this square just here. See that? This is the square I'm coming out of. I'll even zoom in even more so that we can really see. So I'm coming out of this square here. And I'm going to, much like in the diagram in the corner there, go into this teeny weeny little box. So see all those... The, the sort of the small box grid back and forth um, and then down into the teeny weeny box and then I'm going to jump across skip the next big box below and then come out from this one here so you can see if we look at the diagram see that where the small box is we go down past the first big square and then into the next one and slightly inwards um, oh let me just show Vicky uh, I'll put it into right hand. Again, you still want to start in the top right. It, we, we try and do it so that it's from the top right, but I'll show you exactly in a second. I'll put it into right-handed view. The problem with right-handed view is I don't think I can show the instructions. So I'll put it in right-handed for, for a couple of stitches. But anyway, in fact, I'll do it now um, just so that it's a bit more easy for you to see. So essentially what we're going to do once we're here we go down this tiny little square here, which if you need to, you can always rotate the fabric so that you're finding it a bit easier to work with. And then see just here the tiny little box, just there, we want to go into that tiny little box, same as our diagram, just through there. And then we skip one box down. And so if we have a little look, the next box down below that is this one here. See that? So I've skipped, I've gone through the tiny box, I'm going underneath the big box which this bead is coming out of, just here, and I'm going through the next big box down. So there's the big box I'm skipping, just there, you can see with the needle, I'm trying to point to it hopefully, show you, skipping this big box and out of this big box. So when I pull that through, it will just lock that little bead onto that edge and we don't have to worry about it anymore. It's sealed now, essentially. Our little piece is finished, sealed on the end corner there. So um, let's now continue. Ooh, where am I? Here I am. Let's put this back down. Try and focus on the thing there. And I'll show you how to work this technique. So I will show you it from above. Um, Wayne asks, are the diagrams included with the pattern? Yes, they are. You do get the pattern included uh, as well, which the the um, the instructions, they actually include the diagrams and a matching photo. So you've got photo and diagram. So now what I'm going to do is pick up my next bead, and then this time you can see as I'm working back the other direction, I need to work, because I want the slant to be exactly the same, where the beads are in the same diagonal way, I need to actually 
go in the opposite way. So because I need the bead to sit sort of in that same diagonal, but I'm working in the opposite direction, I need to go from this diagonal down to the diagonal above and then underneath. So if I just show you that from here, I'll take it from the bead side, which working with it in your hands is much, much easier. Let's just zoom out a little and I'll try and hold the camera a bit closer. I personally like to hold it upside down. So I'll turn my work around so that I can work away from myself because I find working towards the beadwork is a little bit different, difficult. So I've turned it around so that I can work with it away from myself. So I'm going to go through the big hole diagonally towards the beadwork and then through, whoops, through the bead, the big hole, just, there we go, exactly the same. So now because I've turned it around, I can work in exactly the same way as I was working just before. So I'll pull that nice and tight, whoops, all the way. And now it's time to add a gold bead. So again, I'll just pick up a nice little gold bead. Just, here we go. And now with my thread coming out, where am I? Here I am. With my thread coming out here, I'm going to go diagonally through there and from the beadwork side and then out of the first little big hole just below. So there we go. Pull that nice and tight. Make sure you don't get your thread caught inside of the little loop that you're making. Pull that tight and there's the next bead there. Now let's take a look at our little pattern and I'll continue along as per the design. So I've got to go, okay, lots of the blue ones. So what I like to do when I'm working, just to make sure I lay out my beads. So I try and lay out the entire row. So if we have a look, I'll show you how to work with the word chart here. You can see I'm getting very messy with my, uh, my beads everywhere because I'm trying to keep my camera in shot. Let's just put these back inside here for now. And then looking at the word chart, just here, the way we can count how many rows I've done, if I work just here, I'm doing, if we count them, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I'm working on row number 14. So beads from row 14, if we take a little look at our word chart, I need to put it back into left-handed view for a second so I can show you. Uh, here we go. Ta-da. So get rid of that little diagram there. So yeah, if we have a little look at row 14, I've got 1A, then 1B, 6As, 1C, 6A, 4D, 1A, 4D, 13A, 1B, and 1A. So what I like to do is lay them all out. So like it just said there, I've done my 1A and my 1B. And so I'll just, with my piece of paper here, just work sort of with my finger along as I'm going. So I need to do six little A's. So I'll just lay them out. One, two, three, four, five, six little A's. I'm just laying them out over here to the side. One C, which is a white bead. I've made the patterns exactly the same. So every single one, the C says is white. The A is always the background color. The B is always, you know, and so on. And so I'll just continue on and I'll lay them all out so that you can, oops, just zoom out a touch uh, so we can see. So where am I at now? Six A's, one C, six more A's. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just make sure you don't add too many. It's always important to check because you don't want to make any mistakes. And I'll show you what to do if you do make a mistake. Um, hi to Shariana, who's just joined us over on YouTube, by the way. Um, Elaine has asked, how much is the kit? The kit is on sale for $19.95 at the minute. But if you check out the link on the, dis uh, the in the description, it will take you to the page where you can view that. So now I need to do four more Ds. I'm just laying out my little beads here just to sort of show you the gist of how I do it. 13 more A's, and then you can literally just plow through them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then one B and one A. 
So finish off my row, 1B and 1A. And I'll show you the different kits on the website. I'll show you that now while I'm doing a bit of work. I'll, I'll, I'll continue weaving backwards so that I can show you how to do the other side because it is different. So let's take a look at the Bead Spider website for today. So if you click, if you head to the Bead Spider website there, um, that will take you to the home page of our website, which is this one just here. If you want to see the products from today's tutorial, it is in the link in the description. Otherwise, click the Viewer Razzo related products just there. And it will take you to this page just here, which is the one full of all the products that I'm working with today. If you want to get all four coasters, so the beads, the backing fabric, absolutely everything that you might need for today's tutorial, um, it is in that little kit just there. The only thing it doesn't include is felt because you can sort of choose if you want to felt it, if you want to do it a different way, whatever it is that you fancy you want to do. Um, that's that one just there. I do have the thread here, the uh, the tiger face kit is down here, we've got a wolf face. Here is the angel which is on discount, it's only $12.96 today. We've got the tulip, here's the backing fabric, and also um, here is the, the, uh, the thread conditioner. You can also come up to the, uh, the menu here and in product ranges we have Arazzo. If you click what is Arazzo, it will give you a full rundown about what all of it is. But if you want to see all of the kits, you just click here, Arazzo Beaded Kits. And that will show you all of the different kits that we have here. So there they all are. There's, there's quite a few in stock at the minute. Not too many, actually. We've got 10 in stock at the minute. Um, we're hoping to restock some more soon. But all of those butterflies, I'll just show you as well some of the pictures that people have sent in. The, um, the Arazzo Fairy just here is gorgeous. Let me show you a photo. One of the customers, uh, he made that one. Um, that's this kit just here. It's on sale down to just 22, so it's a really big discount. Um, that's This is the finished piece just here. So, oh, I need to hide my logo for a second. Uh, let's see. Let's just hide that one. There we go. Um, how many beads does that say? I can't even read it. It says 9,393 beads and many hours of enjoyment I have finished. Now for the next one. So that was um, made by Des Sutton. He turned his into a, a wall hanging there. This is one of our other designs, the the uh, the fairy. Um, the uh, Aurelia the fairy, that one there. But yeah, he's made that one. That one's about, the finished design is 8 by 8 inches on that one. So it's a gorgeous little finished design. Um, we also have, someone else sent this in just the other day, I think. There it is. Um, Winnie Wilson, which she might even be watching right now. She did the Arazzo Butterflies. She's done all four in the series. Um, she said she really enjoyed making them. This was the other week that she sent this little picture in. Uh, but yeah, that's what the four little butterflies in this series look like. But the great thing is you can sort of use them as wall hangings. You can um, sew them. I know there was a lady who came to a craft fair of ours. She bought um, the, the wolf face kit, which is this one down here, the wolf face. Um, she made that one into the back. She sewed it into the back of a leather jacket, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, but yeah, that's something that she did. So I'm going to just continue along this row. I'll just zoom in a tiny bit more. But you can see I've got my beads in my row just here. And I can just continue along, beading, weaving, 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 as I go one at a time. And I'll just pick them up and thread them in. So just like I did before, I'll go through the big box below, diagonally across through the big box, and up into the next box. And I'll try and power across. You can see... They do come, uh, it does start to come together really, really quickly, the rows, uh, just because you're sort of going bead by bead. And once you've really got the hang of it, uh, it's quite quick. And you almost don't even need to think about it when you're, let's put my face up in the corner, shall we? Uh, when you're working on it, because you can, you can literally, if you've laid them all out, um, you can just sort of continue along working as you were while you're watching the TV and uh, it works out really, really nicely, um, just sort of coming together. One more. Whoops, make sure you don't knock the beads. I just knocked my beads below. Uh, but yeah, the, the rows come out really quickly. You've only got to be half paying attention, watching TV at the same time, which I quite like doing. 
Um, I can't see the comments anymore. Let's just put those back up on the screen. What do you guys think of this um, uh, of this little little design that we're making? The snowflakes. What are your thoughts on the on the snowflakes? Um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you like them, uh, if you're what what you might do with them. If you don't want to do them as uh, as coasters, because you can always make all four and put them into a, a nice wall hanging. You could also sort of, as Jermaine suggested, um, do them as sort of connect them with ribbon and and do them as a really nice wall hanging, kind of like our, uh, where have I put you, our, our angel. You could sort of make a wall hanging like the angel and then join them with ribbon or beadwork or whatever and sort of have them as a really long single piece, uh, whatever sort of takes your fancy. But yeah, you can see, like, I can easily just chat away and not even have to think about the weed work because I've already laid out my rows below. And because it's so simple, this sort of half cross-stitch design, uh, it is very, very easy to do. Um, but yeah, let's sort of just continue along, beading away as we were. And um, when I get to the end, I'll show you how to turn around. Plus also, I'll show you how to undo beads if you make any mistakes in a second. Uh, but yeah, it's all very, very easy. So you can see this particular thread, see how it's in two pieces? This is what it'll be like if it's not conditioned, which isn't a problem at all. You don't have to condition it. But personally, I do like having it conditioned just because it turns it into like one single thread. It's two threads that you turn into just one. So again, it's, it is... It is um, down to your personal preference if you use the thread conditioner or not, but it's not entirely necessary. Um, uh, Elaine asks, do you glue on the felt um, then first, then trim it? So there's quite a few different ways that you can do it. It's sort of up to your preference. If you're more of a sewer, you can very easily... I'll put that question up on the screen, actually. Um, where are we? Yeah, if you are a sewer... Uh, you can very, very easily sort of just sew the thread. Because it's designed with this backing fabric, uh, Jermaine likes to use her zipper foot. The zipper foot of her, um, her thread, uh, of her sewing machine, gives a really clean, close um, finish with, with sewing. You can also do it by hand if you prefer. Um, but yeah, the, the sewing machine's really easy. You can glue it. Whatever you want to do almost, you can you can do it like that. Um, it's very, very versatile. There's a lot of different ways that you can work with it. So um, yeah, glue it, stitch it. Anything that you could do with a piece of fabric, essentially, once you've done this, you're, you're, it's no longer beadwork when you've finished your design. It's literally a piece of fabric. Oh, yes, Elaine also asked, show me how to do a piece of new thread. I will. Uh, I'll do that when I get to the end of this row. I'll show you how to weave off a thread and how to weave in a new thread. So I'll just power on to the end of this row. You can see I'm already two th halfway there. You can just sort of continue along. It's nice. I can finally read the questions. If there's any questions anyone had, um, please do ask. Uh, I see Jan... No, who was it? Uh, yes, K. K asked, can you use... Um, just one strand of thread. You can, but the beads don't really tend to sit as neatly, as snugly, and as nicely on the backing fabric. Of course, if you prefer using one thread, you certainly can, but also then you don't have to deal with the tail thread um, of your work getting caught up when you're, when you're working. You just sort of have this one single thread attached at the end of your needle and you almost don't need to worry about it. it it all just sort of threads plus if you've got to undo beads it's like fairly easily as well but um here we go uh i'm trying to read the questions if you've got any questions now's the time to ask because i'm able to read them uh, I'm hoping to read them the conversation is absolutely flying over on youtube there's so many comments coming up um Susan says, I love the idea of a zipper foot. So clever. Well, I would have been never been able to tell you that. Luckily, Jermaine, the, the queen of craft almost, uh, knows all about sewing. That's sort of where her crafting obsession began. So Jermaine knows all about the sewing aspects. If you want to get our DVD, by the way, we have an Arazzo DVD. Uh, it is on the website. It does cover some really good ways of how you can do 
um, like sewing with it. So like, for example, that box that I showed you, the craft box and the craft bag and also the wall hanging, all of those are on the DVD, how Jermaine has actually made those. That's on the DVD if you fancy having a go and trying that. Um, you can see I'm, I'm, it's coming together really, really quickly, this little fella. Um, like I said, you, you really don't even need to focus at all on what you're doing. Um, ooh, let's see, let's just keep going. Uh, I'm almost at the end and I can show you how. Uh, can you use the felt with the sticky adhesive on it? Yes. So uh, that's Tina has just asked. Oh, I just see Tina is one of our sharers. I forgot to mention. Uh, if you are watching this, please do like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. I, I keep forgetting to mention that now. Um, do you know, actually, in terms of subscribing, uh, over on YouTube, we're ever getting ever closer, ever closer to our target of 20,000 subscribers before Christmas. We're at 17,000, uh, sorry, 19,725, um, I think it was before the show. I'd have to have a look again just to be sure. Um, uh, oh, great. I'm almost at the end now. I just realized I missed a bead. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'll add that one in, do a few more. And then uh, someone's just asked, can you use a 10 count tapestry fabric? I'm not sure. I've used a very, very specific backing fabric canvas for this design, just because I think it's uh, important that uh, the, the, because the beads and the fabric need to um, match each other exactly because one bead is exactly the size of one box. Uh, that's a question from April. I'll see if I can show it up yet. Um, uh, Kaylee said, will a heavy mug full of tea be safe to and not break the beads? I wouldn't think so. The beads, the Preciosa ones, they're really, really sturdy, solid glass, so they don't they don't really break very easily. Um, there's a comment. Uh, how much is the DVD, asks. I have a feeling it's, I'm not sure, it's either a tenner, I think usually, I can't remember exactly. It's usually a tenner for our DVDs. Um, but yeah, let's just take a look. I'll show you how to undo any... Um, any beads if you make any little mistakes. So I've just realized uh, I've, have I missed one? No, I didn't, I didn't miss any. Um, did I miss a bead? Where am I at? Where am I up to? Uh, row 14, four Ds, 13 As, one B and one A. Yeah, I think I've done it all perfectly. Yes, it does look good. So I just need to un I just need to add more bees. I wasn't paying attention. Uh, I got a little bit lost for a minute there. Um, so when I get to the end here, let's just show you how to turn around. Oops, there we go. So I'm using size 10 Preciosas. Uh, I missed the start. Can you tell me what size beads they are? They're Preciosa size 10s. Uh, and then it's the, the backing fabric that we sell on our website. Uh, is available as well. It's a double canvas, but like I said, it's a very, very specific size. Um, Ada you can use, but you don't get such a neat finished design because the the structure of the canvas um, is exactly the size of the bead, so it works exactly the way you need it to. So now that I'm almost at the end, I'm going to just add on my bead and my final, be uh, my final edge bead, and then I'm going to show you how to turn around. Um, which again, it's a nice simple process. On this end, the second end, when you get back to the start, uh, it's very, very easy. So let's just take that one down through there, pull it tight. And now let me just put it down and add a new thread. Yes, don't worry. I will show how to add a new thread and how to finish off a thread. But first I'm gonna turn around. Uh, right, great, there we go, I've turned around. No, sorry, that was a terrible joke. I could not resist. What was I even thinking? Uh, so let's have a little look. I'll turn it around so it's in the same sort of direction as our diagrams, and I'll show you the diagram. This is even easier turn. This is the really, really easy turn. So here we go, Mr. Instruccione. Um, so yeah, I'll show you the diagram first of what I've just been doing, because I, I should have shown that one. So when I was at the other end, you can see there, I'm sort of working diagonally from the beadwork and across and then out the opposite side. So that's sort of how we're adding our little beads like that. So now that we've finished our row, we've gotten to the end, you can see my thread is coming out 
of, let's zoom right in for this. I love how easy it is for me to zoom in and out and everything. Great, so with my thread, I've just added my last one and I'm coming out of this big box just here. So what I need to do, if we take a little look, just one instruction backward. So see how I'm coming out of the, um, the little red, uh, the little red circle there, sorry. Um, the red square, why am I saying circle? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, so now that I'm coming out of the red, what I'm going to do now is weave across and take from that red where, my, where I'm starting, I'm going to go through the tiny little square beside, diagonally upwards, and then back down again from the, uh, the underside, back up through that same square. So I'm literally going across and down. So I'm starting from this big square here. I'm going to go down the tiny square just beside it. And then from the underside, I'm going to go back out of this same square that I'm currently exiting. So maybe if I wait, let's try this and see if this helps to make it a bit easier to see what I'm doing. No, apparently it's not going to help at all. It's just going to make my face look darker. So down the big square, the tiny square, sorry. So if we have a look, there's the tiny square. I often stab myself in the finger when I'm doing this, but just got to be careful. So through the tiny square, just down it all the way. Pull that nice and tight. Pull, 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 pull. There we go. And then back. So this is the big square I was coming out of. Whoops, no, where am I? I'm so close. I'm so zoomed in that I'm so close. So yeah, I was coming out of here. I went down that one. And so from the underside, I need to just make sure I come out again. I'm trying to do this from above too, from the exact same hole. So there we go. Ah, just got caught. My thread got caught. There we go. Uh, where am I at? Here we go. Try and find myself. So zoomed in. Pull, 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 all the way through. Sounds like wee, 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 all the way home. Um, and now I'm ready to continue with my next row. So again, I'll pick up one dark blue bead and exactly like we did just before, we're going to go from here, diagonally downwards and up into the square above. So there we go. There we go through there and oh, I'm out of shot, sorry. There we go. So from the square below, diagonally across, through the, the box below and up through the box above. Pull and that gets it in position. Now we'll do the next gold one because it's really easy. You always start with, a, with, a, with the, the, the color A and then you always do a color B every row. Doesn't matter which one, every time it's the same. So through there, up the box below, above, sorry. Oh, I keep getting out of shot. I really should zoom out. Um, and then pull that tight. And that will, there we go, lock our little bead in place. And we can continue onwards. So I'll do one more. And then I'm going to show, as promised, how to um, weave off your thread. So let's go diagonally across. So I'll try and, I'll show you how I hold it. I like to hold it sort of in my hands. And I, you can even bend it if you want to, which, let's zoom out a little. So see that? I've bent it in my hand, which is no problem at all. And then you can literally just, wait, I'll zoom in a bit more so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. Get this thread out the way so you can see. And now coming out from this box diagonally across, and you can see it's really easy when you bend the thread because it's just a straight line then. Pull that tight. Make sure you don't get caught on your previous beads. Pull, and then there you go. Locks in place nicely. So I'll show you first how to undo a, um, a thread. Um, and then I will, uh, sorry, how to undo a bead in case you've made a mistake. And then I'll show you how to change your threads. So let's zoom out so that we keep it nicely in shot. If you accidentally put the wrong color bead in, it's very, very easy. To just undo it. So all you got to do, you can use your fingernails if you want to, and you can just sort of pick it out even, and then 
pull, 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 pull with your thread. But because you don't have a tail thread, you can sort of just keep this straight. You can even bend it slightly, your little thread there, and pull that until your needle is pretty much exactly at the canvas. And then you just weave it backwards in the direction underneath that you've just come from. So see that? I've just taken it backwards through that little bit of canvas, pull that out, and then you can just remove the bead from the thread, and then you've removed a bead. Really, really easy. As simple as that. Now, let me show you. Oh, Kay said, don't forget your tea. I don't even have one, you know. Um, uh, there. So now what I'm going to do is just sort of show you how to weave off your thread, which again, it's very, very simple. The way we started our thread is exactly the same way um, that you can uh, weave it again. So I'll just, sorry, the way you start a thread is the same way that you finish a thread. So much like how I did a little back stitch, which I'm just trying to show this. Come on now, let's do a back stitch. So where's that first little diagram? I'll put the diagram up on the screen, zoom out a touch so we can see what I'm doing. And let's go back. So essentially what I'm going to do at that point is just go down through one of the small holes and then sort of around through the, uh, the fabric into the small holes. It doesn't matter too much where you do it uh, because it's not really going to get in the way of anything. So I'll just go in here. And then I'll show you, there's a small hole just next to where I'm at. So I'll go down that small hole, like so. Take my thread down the small hole. And then you can turn it over and you do your back stitch from the back. You can do it from the front if you want to, but otherwise um, you can do it from the back. So, and now again, as I did with my thing, I'm going to go through any of the little small ones. It doesn't matter which even. I'm going to go through this one. In fact, you can even do it sideways if you want to. But I'm going to go through this one here, under the small one, and up into the next one. And that should give me a fairly nice little back stitch. I'll do it again, one more time, just to get it really secure, nice and tight. And then what I like to do is just weave under the stitches I've already added. So if you see just here, see how there's a little bit of white stitching going across the backing fabric? I tend to go underneath those with my needle. And then I'll get it almost all the way through so that I've got a small little loop. See that? And then I'll take my thread back through that little loop and tie it into a knot. If you prefer, you can always just sort of backstitch through those little bits again as well too. So look, I'll go under it once more and then it's really going to be tight now. And then underneath the next one and if you need to, you can go through others. You can sort of just jump around. It doesn't matter too much uh, about our backing fabric at all. We can sort of just go wherever we fancy, just like so. And then we just bring in a new thread in exactly the same way at the same sort of point. So the way I like to do it is possibly, let's zoom out now, too close. There we go. Um, so yeah, if we are working just here, essentially we can bring in a new thread uh, wherever we fancy, just sort of somewhere around here. And then you can just make sure that you're continuing so that you're in exactly the same spot. So again, we would make sure we're exiting from the same big square that we where our thread was just before. And then we just sort of start weaving in more beads as we need to. You can just cut this thread off once it's fully the old thread, whatever's left if you want to, cut it off um, and then just sort of continue onwards from there. Um, but yeah, that will sort of show you all the different ways uh, from doing the back and forth and all of that um, where was this? What if a mistake was a few rowbacks? Can you break one out and weave another in like you can with Pyote? Yes. Wait a minute. Where's that little question? I'll pop that on the screen. Uh, what if you make a mistake a few rows back? Yes, you can. If you want to, you can sort of break a bead, get like a pair of pliers and give it a big old squeeze and sort of 
break the bead and then you can just weave in a new bead wherever it was that you made a mistake even if it's all the way back here and the good thing is because it will just have thread you can almost attach the thread to the backing fabric and then continue along great now now that we've done that i've shown you all of the the different techniques let's talk about how you would finish it into a little coaster there's quite a few different ways let's just hide that little comment wherever i put it there it is hide that one zoom out so yeah, now that we've got our little finished piece, just say you've gotten all the way to the end and you've finished adding all of your rows as you need to, and you get to the bottom. What you can do, you take off your sticky tape, you finish off all of your threads. There's quite a few different ways that you can finish it off into your little um, uh, coaster, if you want to, however you want. It's entirely up to you. If you're more of a card maker, you can use more card making techniques. If you're a sewer, Definitely use some sewing techniques, whatever it is that you want. This particular one, I'll tell you how it was done. So um, the the felt, we don't include felt because we just don't sell felt. So um, we haven't got the felt included. Plus then you can choose whatever color felt you, you want. The backing fabric is included in the kit though. So um, you've got all the beads, you've got the backing fabric, you've got the thread, everything. The only thing that you might need is the... Um, the, the felt, if you want to do it with felt, uh, go get some nice felt, which I have some just here. I just went down and bought some inexpensive felt. I think I got a piece like this for a pound or something. If you want to, you could even use funky foam, which I just got. I got these, you know, just down at the, the local sort of shop. They're pretty readily available. You can get them at the, you know, newspaper agency or whatever. Um, but yeah, you can use foam, whatever it is that you fancy. Um, this particular one, I did use some felt. I also had some... Um, where's it gone? The... Here we go. Buckram, which is nice and stiff. This gives it some nice firmness to it. Uh, you can use buckram if you want to, which this does have buckram in it. Now, there's a couple of things I'll show you as well, which definitely make it a lot better. So when you're working with this, choose something to be the layer under... Oh yeah, you could use cork, you can use rubber, whatever it is that you want. If you want to sew to it, sew to it. If you want to glue, glue. Whatever is easiest for you, that's what you should do. So this particular one, I glued it. Essentially what I did was took some scissors and cut as straight as I could around the outside. So I left about a, a finger's width, maybe a little bit less, you can see. Uh, you can sew fabric if you prefer, if you don't want to use felt, whatever it is that you want to use. Just use that. Um, but yeah, so I left a little piece about this sort of size. And in this particular one, what I did, I cut out a piece of felt that was exactly the size of my coaster. And I stuck it to the back. I also had some buckram underneath that because you want the layer underneath your beadwork to be the most similar to your background color. So because I've used a dark background color, I've used a dark sort of felt, this felt here, as my layer underneath. Then I have a layer of the buckram to give it some uh, thickness, which the buckram you can iron and it has like the glue that melts and it will stick it together as well. Um, what do they call this stuff as well? Uh, interfacing, I think, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so this will give it some nice stiffness. And then I've got another piece of felt that I've put underneath my, my sort of wedge of backing fabric, um, felt, and then buckram, or interfacing, whatever it's called. And then, then because they're all stuck together, I've put this piece into the center of that, and I took a bigger piece of felt and folded it over the top of the edges. So essentially, if I show you, sort of like this. Can you cut it to the exact size of the beads width? Width, Yes, as long as you don't cut the... Um, that's a question there from Elaine. Let's see if I can find it. Can you cut it to the exact side of the bead width? You can, but just make sure you don't cut your threads. So if you have a little look at the edging, 
So see there's a little thread just here at the edge. Just make sure you don't cut that. So I would recommend making sure you cut on the outside of that little bit there. Or when you finish a row, maybe finish a row sort of inside. So you know how when I, wait a second, when I did my end of my row like this. So see how I went to the outside? You could always use... Uh, see where the, the, the blue square is on the outside? You can always go through a blue square on the inside, one of the small ones. Um, show the angel. What What is it about the angel I need to show? I can't remember. Um, here, I'll show you the angel. You can do... Wait, here it is. Let's just zoom out again. So many just zooming in and out. Uh, you can also, if you want to, do a little um, pico of beads. You might need some extra beads, though. Let's hope it catches focus. There we go. So I've just added a little pico of beads around the end. So if you watched my little video on how I did the um, pen wrap, it's exactly the same. I've just done a little thing there, and then I've glued this to the back. But uh, you can see there is some of the white fabric at the side, which isn't a big problem. You can always just use a permanent marker and color that in if you want to in that same blue backing fabric material. Uh, color. So whatever sort of felt color you want to use, you can sort of color this in very, very easily with a, a permanent marker. I did have one around so that I could show you, but I think I left it in the other room. Doesn't matter. But yeah, otherwise, you can bend the canvas in um, sort of underneath and then glue on sort of thing. It's, um, yes, pelmet stiffening. That's what it's called. This stuff, pelmet, apparently. Uh, but yeah, so what you can do is fold this over on itself to give you a really flush little edge. Get it nice and close to the edge as you can. Uh, just sort of fold it to give you your edging. Where I'll do it at the top here to really show it. See, look, you fold it over. You've got a fairly clean edge to work with there. See that? So there's a clean edge, but there, as you can see, you can sort of see the backing fabric through. So what you want to do is make sure you've put it onto something dark so that you don't see the backing fabric. It hides it, it makes it invisible. But yeah, otherwise, uh, cut a small edge and then you just fold this over exactly to the spot where it edges. And then you can stitch it there, you can glue it there, whatever it is that's easiest for you. You can use that zipper foot, which is what Jermaine did on the front of her box with the fabric. So you can see it's really, really close to the edge there because that's been zipper footed along that edge just there. So really, really easy to do that uh, if you if you sort of stitch that. But then, yeah, essentially you just go around and you can glue the edges on. Make sure you don't use a dirty clamp like I accidentally did because you'll dirty your... Uh, I need to clean that. But make sure your clamp is nice and clean, which I didn't. Uh, and then you just glue the edges nice and nice and close and then fold the corners to mitre them. You can, If you want to, you can sort of go over the top. But essentially, it's sort of a very, very easy process to just stitch it, glue it, whatever is easiest for you. That's sort of how you can do it. And then you have this lovely finished little coaster like this. Whatever is sort of your skill set, sewing, gluing, card making, um, whatever it is that you like, there it is. There's your finished little design. And you can then take your mug, which mine is empty, and just pop it straight on top like that. Filthy in there, because I had my tea. Um, but yeah, you can see it's a nice snug little size for the top there. And then you can make that little set of four. So don't forget, if you want to get these little kits. Check out the link in the description and then you will get all four of these designs. So you can see this one here is that one there. So there's your finished little design and if I hold it up nice and close, the reason the photo looks a bit funny is because it has on it the letters. See that? So you can see them if you want to. A, 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 B, B. So all the C's are labelled C and all the D's are labelled D. And so on, so forth. Kay said, would you use cardboard too? Yeah, why not? Of course you could. Um, whatever it is that you want to do, it's like really, really versatile. Once you've done that, you can literally do anything that you want with it. But yeah, see, there's all your different um, letters, uh, whatever it is that you fancy. 
Um, but yeah, don't forget, you will get the instructions. So the diagrams that I've been using, um, these ones here, you'll get all of the diagrams. I've only shown a few, but you will get them all, plus the photographs included as well. Um, you've got all of the beads, so you've got all four colours. So the blue, the white, the gold, uh, and then your background colour as well. All of those are included. Um, I could persuade the... Ah, oh, this is a fun one. I could pers Jan says, I could persuade the manservant to make a nice wooden frame for it too. Yes, that's another lovely idea there um, of Jan's. She said that she, maybe she'll get her manslave, her manservant, uh, to do that one. Uh, how long will the Christmas kits be available for? Will it still be available after Christmas? The kit will be available, but the sale, which is discounted at the minute, is um, just for the next week. So until next Wednesday. Speaking of sales, uh, if you missed the Labyrinth necklace and bracelet sale, if you want to make those, uh, the, the Labyrinth is still on sale the um the the bugle bells that i did uh which if you click the link in the description about previous shows it will take you to all of the different products and stuff for the previous shows that i've done uh but yeah um you can literally do whatever you want with it you can quilt with it you can fabric you can you can even make little um sort of curve it into a napkin holder if you wanted to stitch the edges together and turn it into like a little tube for, for a napkin holder, whatever it is that you want. Uh, do you offer the pattern without the kit? At the moment, not, but I might put it up um, available. But uh, like I said, the thing is, the reason that we do it, um, this is a question from Lynn. Uh, I'll put it up, but the problem is the backing fabric is very, very specific. So if you don't have the right backing fabric, you might struggle to get the beads to sit as neatly as these ones do because um, this is something that we spent a long time uh, for uh, a long time sort of working out so that they don't sort of bunch too close they don't stretch too far apart so that they're nice and neatly in contact with each other um, by the way this is a great idea um, who was it about a wooden frame do you know what would be an awesome idea uh, which I think people are talking about it uh, a wooden frame instead of instead of doing the wait let's see if I can find it instead of making it a frame why not make little wooden um, coasters and then just pop it inside of the coaster glue it inside the coaster leave a little ridge and then just pop that straight down um, uh, but yeah, literally, you can just sort of use this pattern as you see fit. So it is a piece of fabric when you finish. So if we have a look at my tiger once more, my tiger face kit, let's just zoom out. There's a lot that you can do. You can see my messy table. Um, there we go. And then you can see it's very, very soft like fabric. So whatever you would do with a piece of fabric, you can do with this. Sew it, quilt it, glue it whatever you want um, like I said you can cut it down to size whatever it is that takes your fancy and there's your finished design ready to work with Susan says how would you wash it uh, yes you can stick it in the washing machine uh, for the most part the beads should be fine in the water um, I would think uh, for the most part can't guarantee how the beads will react because I haven't done it before but um, it should be fine to go in a very, very gentle wash or, or wash them by hand maybe just to keep the beads safe. But they should be okay. Uh, but yeah, once you've got your fabric finished, whatever you want to do with it, uh, you can do with it. So it's it's very, very versatile. Um, like I said, a lady took our wolf, which maybe I have the wolf here. Do I have our wolf face? No, I've just got loads of butterflies. Um, yeah, a lady took our wolf face. There's one of the butterflies. Um, a lady took our wolf face and stitched it into the back of a jacket, which looked really, really cool. Uh, I saw a lady who made the tiger face into a bag very similar to Jermaine's peacock bag, which is this one here. So yeah, you don't have to make coasters. You can do whatever you want. Hangers, clothing, bags, suggests Janet here. Lots of suggestions from her. Uh, but yeah, lots and lots of different ways that you can 
you can use it. Um, the question was, what size fabric do you sell? We don't sell fabric. Um, we have, well, we sell we sell the backing fabric, the grid here, uh, which is the the canvas, the 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 sort of the Arato backing canvas. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's very important that if you want to do the Arato, you do need to use this. Uh, do you have small patterns? The question was the small patterns. The smallest ones, we do have a test one. The, the well, the, the um, these ones are the smallest patterns for sure that we would do, I would think. Uh, but otherwise, let's take a look on the website and see what patterns I've got available at the minute. I don't have them all available, I don't think. Uh, let's see. So I've got here, here we go. This is a question. Um about from a lane what do you have small patterns so uh let's see we've got the coasters up here this is that that um the fairy which was absolutely stunning which was sent in a picture was sent in by des sutton there's the finished one that uh des made of that gorgeous angel design uh, sorry fairy which um i'll tell you a little bit about uh, how the beads sort of make the effects different. But anyway, that's this one just here, which is on sale. Um, there's the tiger face. Here's the butterfly. We have a series of four of them. So there's the, the monarch butterfly, the purple butterfly, the pink butterfly, and the blue, which is what uh, Winnie Wilson has made. That's those four that Winnie has done as well. You can see there those finished designs that I was showing you. I do have all four of them here. Here's the pink one. I showed you the Monarch just a second ago. Wait a second. Here we go. There's the pink design. The purple design is this one here. So you can see there, I've got them all. There's the, the blue and I've got the Monarch. Just here so they're all real types of uh, butterflies they're all of them plus i've got my wolf face which this only shows you a fraction of the wolf face he's really really cool the angel uh, is on sale and i've also got the tulips which includes the instructions on how to make jermaine's craft box which uh, i'm trying to get all these things i've got so many things on the table here it's all sliding all over the place um so yeah the angel looks like this, which it includes the instructions on how to do this. So there you go. This is the little angel kit just there. You will make that one, which I think is a really, really cute wall hanging. You could stick this on your on your own front door um, if you wanted to. Couldn't resist. Um, or, like I said, the tulip set does make the boxes, which includes the instructions on how to make the box. So there's Jermaine's little box that she's made, full of all Jermaine's little jewellery goodies. Oh, you can't see in there too long. There's too many nice things, which I don't want to show you yet. But yeah, there's the first pattern. And then, of course, you've got the second pattern included as well. So it does have both patterns and the instructions on how to make the box. That is the tulip kit just here, plus the angel was there. And then, of course, you've got today's coasters. So make sure you check that one out. Um... But yeah, we're planning on bringing out more and more patterns. Um, but yeah, so if you keep an eye out, we will have more patterns, especially if you guys find this really, really fun and interesting and you want to make these sorts of things. I mean, obviously, the more popular they seem to become, the more likely we'll be bringing out more patterns. So um, that is definitely on the cards. But of course, for today, if you want to get our coasters it does include all the beads plus the backing fabric you've got the thread you've got a needle um, all that you might need the only thing you might want is a piece of um the uh what's it called the um thread conditioner which if you click the link in the description uh it will take you to this page on our website which oh wait a second i've just realized we have a problem um, just give me a minute. I think our, we're out of stock on this kit. I'm going to... We've got more stock. I'm about to put this back in stock. I see it's currently gone out of stock. People are buying it like crazy, it seems. But I'm going to add more stock right now. I'll try and do it this very, very moment um, so that you don't miss out because I know I can add more. Clearly, people are buying like crazy. Uh, so if you want to get these, don't uh, don't delay because they'll be out of stock very, very soon. 
Uh, I'm going to put them back in stock. We do have enough to make some extras. I did keep some in reserve, uh, but I'm already having to add to the reserve. So if you're wanting to get that, make sure you wait five minutes. It will be back in stock. I'm doing it this very, very second while, while uh, I'm on the video. Uh, that's why I'm fluffing about, chatting away. But anyway, while um, I'm doing that, don't forget, if you want to be on the show on Saturday, uh, I can um, send you pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and I will try and get you onto the show. Uh, so hopefully the... the uh, oh, great. Someone's doing it for me, it seems. The snowflake will be back in stock in just a few seconds. Uh, hopefully, I should think. Uh, but yes. Oh, wait. Where am I? Here am I. Here I am. Uh, yes, so make sure they're, you don't miss out. They're back in stock now. Um, I, I can probably do a few more. Let's just check that it's on the website now. Anyway, apparently they're back in stock, so you should be able to get those back in stock now. Um, they are available again, uh, so don't miss out. If you do want those, you can get them now. Um, so yeah, don't don't miss out on that one. Uh, they're very, very nice little designs. I've got them back in stock, so you can click the little link in the description. It will take you to the website where you can get the coasters again. Clearly, they've been flying out of the shelves. Um, but yeah, I put it back in stock, so don't miss out. Uh, yeah, if you want to be on the show, send us your pictures. Make sure you're sending in, um, you know, whatever it is that you've been doing, your pets, things that you've been making, food that you've been cooking, whatever it is that takes your fancy. Um, if you've made a labyrinth kit, I know our labyrinth, uh, it is still on sale, but if you, uh, I know a lot of people bought these ones, so I'm expecting we'll see lots of pictures being sent in of that one very, very soon. So if you want to get that one, um, do get that while it's still on sale. Today is the last day that it's in sale, I believe. So definitely um, check that out. They We do have a sale on that one as well. So click that little link that says view upcoming shows uh, so that we can make sure that um, so that you can find that. That's a very, very easy way to find it. Um, but yeah, it's a very, very uh, beautiful little design. But the sale for that one is ending very, very soon. So if you want to get that one, oops, I just pressed the wrong button. Um, yeah, if you want to get that one, uh, check it out on the website. I'll just put my face back in. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just making sure that the, the stock doesn't disappear too quickly. I, um, yes, had to make sure it was all there. So all is well with the website. Again, you can get that um, design again. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, those coasters would look good in red, white, and silver too, says Jan. Yes, they absolutely would. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Um, if you fancied the... Uh, yes, they're back in stock. They're back in stock. You can get them again now. Um, there's very limited though. So be quick. Um, otherwise, of course, we do have on sale the angel. The, um, the tiger is there. The wolf is there. The angel, the fairy. The fairy is definitely one worth taking a look at. Um, but yeah, I will be back on Friday. I'm going to be showing you, we've got lots of really fun little Christmas earrings, which, let's see if I can find that one. No, no, where is it? Uh, yeah, we've got loads of little Christmas earrings that I'm going to be doing on Friday. I might show you how to make a little beaded elf um, on Friday. So if you go to the Bead Spider homepage and check out in the top right corner, upcoming shows, you'll see our ultimate Christmas earrings uh, tutorial is coming, which we have lots and lots of fun little um, Christmas earrings there. There's ones with seed beads, there's head pin ones, there's snowmen, there are... Um, what else have we got? Let's have a look. Um, let's see what I've got in a minute. Just check the little product category. Here we go. So yeah, we've got our little elves up here, we've got Santa's hats, there's candles, there's a couple of baubles, not many of those left. Um, there are Christmas trees galore. There's some angels. I'm gonna check the stock and see if our little nutcracker is available But otherwise if you check out we do have um, a Christmas uh, This is the guy I might demonstrate just here. We might have a few others around I have to just check the stock on those, but these are the sorts of things I'm gonna be showing you how to make um, Over the next few days, but otherwise if you have a look 
at our product ranges and then go to Christmas. There's lots of other things in there too. So if we have a look, you can see all of the bugle bells are there as well. You can still get that free gift if you want to get that one today. That's when that expires. Um, but yeah, we've got our wreaths down there, the brick stitch stuff, lots and lots of really fun Christmassy things um, to look at. But then, yeah, you can see we've got wreaths as well, a little crystal wreath. Um, our snowmen, oh, I don't think that was in the other product page. I can't remember. Um, there's other decorations there, an angel and a snowdrop, bookmarks, um, all sorts of different ones. Oh, plus we've got our little Christmas gift vouchers. If you want to get a gift voucher for someone, um, there you go. They're, they're available as well. So if you want to get someone a gift voucher, check that out. That's our Christmas page if you want to see that one. Um, but yeah, so I will be back on Friday to show you lots of different um, lots of different designs that we've got uh, for our earrings. On Saturday, again, I've got a gorgeous design coming. I'm going to, do you know what? I wasn't going to. If I've got it here, I'll show you. If I don't, then you'll just have to wait till Saturday. But it's a gorgeous little design. No, you'll have to wait. I'll show you on Friday. But we've got a new tutorial um, coming on Saturday as well. So again, 3 p.m. Saturday, where I'm going to show you how to make a really, really uh, glamorous um, bracelet design using crystals, which I suppose it's Christmassy, but you could literally wear it at any time of year. It's super spectacular. That's what's coming on Saturday. I will show you more on Friday. So make sure you're here for Friday's tutorial. If you are new and you've never been on um, the, the channel before, please do like, share, subscribe, all of those sorts of things. Um, I will be back on Friday, as I said. We do Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at 3 p.m. UK time um, at the moment. But, uh, you know, we might change when it comes up to Christmas. We'll see. But yeah, the best way to know when we're doing things is click the little link in the description that says sign up to our newsletter for more patterns and free videos and things because that will be the way that you will find out when we're doing our tutorials. It's the easiest way to find out when and where I'm going to be uh, is you'll get an email in your inbox about 15 minutes before the video, but you can use the same link in the same email to watch on demand if you miss the show at the time. So whenever you want, uh, you'll be able to watch me live, but otherwise, um, head over to YouTube and subscribe. Help us get to 20,000. We're so close, just a couple hundred to go, 250 or so to go, and we will be there finally at the um, 20,000 mark, which I'm really, really excited for. Uh, should be tremendous fun. If we if we manage to get there before Christmas, I'll be so happy. Uh, but yeah, also like our page on Facebook, all of the usual sort of stuff. I will see you on Friday. Um, in case you uh, wanted to make sure you get the little coasters before they sell out again. Um, I put the stock back in, but make sure you're quick because um, stock is relatively limited. Uh, so I hope that you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I'll see you on Friday and I hope you in, um, will be having a lovely afternoon or day or evening, depending on whatever time it is where you are. Again, thank you for joining. I will see you all on Friday at 3 p.m. for our Christmas earring designs uh, tutorial. So make sure you set a little reminder and I'll see you then. Thanks very much. Bye bye.